Okay, uh, we'll just give it a few more seconds uh, before we get it started. And during the session, uh, if you have any question, uh, please use chat option uh, to submit your question to our staff. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Lee. Uh, I'm a structural engineer and consultant for Midas. Uh, I'd like to thank you for joining today. And some of the attendees are users of Midas Civil, and some might not have any experience with Midas before. Uh, whether you are Midas user or not, uh, I hope this session can help you learn about most up-to-date and efficient process uh, for bridge analysis and design. And nowadays, structure analysis and design using computer programs have become common practice in bridge engineering. And demand for 3D FEM solutions have increased rapidly as engineers seek out more accurate and better results. And many Ministry of Transportation are moving toward to encourage or require 3D analysis of whole bridge structures. Although 3D FEM are becoming more popular, uh, there are not many software designed for bridge engineers in Canada, and many limitations and lack of features for Canadian code cause frustrations among engineers. Today, uh, we are going to talk about three things. Uh, first, I want to talk about uh, why Mida Civil is easy to use and how Mida Civil gives you freedom when you are working on your project. And second, uh, I will talk about newly developed design feature per CSA S614 code and give you a demonstration of modeling and design of pre-stressed concrete gutter and steel composite bridge. And third, I want to share uh, the future that Midas will bring to bridge engineering. And Midas are committed to provide a better solution. And we continuously develop our software so that you can make best out of our program. Uh, Midas have been uh, developing engineering software and providing consulting services uh, since 1989. Uh, we have about 540 structural engineers and software developers. And we continuously develop our software and implement features uh, to make easy and all-in-one solution for bridge engineers. Uh, not just in Canada or North America, uh, but our presence extends worldwide. Uh, Mida Civil have been used for numerous landmark bridges and local conventional bridges. Uh, it has been tested and been proven. And we have big user base in Canada. Uh, some of the consultants, uh, I cannot name all of them, but uh, companies like Parsons, Dalkan, uh, WSP, uh, Triple M, uh, PB Associated Engineering, and SNC Lavalin, and many more are using Mida Civil for their projects. And also, uh, more than 25 DOTs in North America are using Mida Civil. Uh, in Canada, uh, government agency like BCMOTI and the MTO are using Mida Civil, and Yukon government and city of Winnipeg in Manitoba is using uh, Mida Civil as well. And big DOTs like uh, Caltrans, Texas DOT, Illinois DOTs, uh, Florida DOTs are using Mida Civil in US too. Midas Civil is all-in-one bridge engineering software. Uh, Midas enables you to analyze and design bridge as whole structure. An importance of considering superstructure and substructure together are growing a lot, and Midas Civil have solution for that. Whether you are working on a concrete or steel or composite structures, 
uh, Midas can handle them all. And while doing the projects, uh, you do not have to switch around the program and go one by one uh, trying to match the numbers. And using 3D analysis help you uh, get accurate results which will prevent you from getting excessively uh, conservative numbers on your project. As a structure engineer myself, I want a set process that is applicable to any types of bridges, which will increase efficiency. At the same time, when I face challenge such as irregular shape or geometry, I need freedom to modify my model easily and do not want to be limited by the a cumbersome template or a features only working with certain types of sections. Midas Civil is that kind of program. Uh, it establishes easy process for projects and give you easy way to solve any challenges. Midas Civil is known for capability to handle advanced structures such as segmental, cable state, and suspension bridges. However, most common types of projects done by Midas Civil is conventional bridges, such as curbed frame bridges, slab bridges, precast gutter or integral bridges, steel plate gutter bridges, and steel box gutter bridges. Here are some examples of projects completed with Midas Civil. Midas Civil is being used all around Canada, especially. There were increase in MIDA civil usage in P3 projects and light rail and rail bridge projects. I'm sure many of you are involved in P3 projects or came across uh, light rail projects. MIDA civil excels in those kind of structures. Calgary West light rail track is a good example. And Alexander Bridge, Moore Canyon Bridge, and Nelson Creek Bridge were also done with MIDAS Civil. Regardless of structure type, uh, MIDAS can handle them all. Here are another example of a long span steel arch bridge in Canada. And there's many uh, different types of bridges uh, done by MIDAS Civil. One of the biggest strengths in Mida Civil is program's graphic user interface. And Mida Civil is not a black box. You can always check your work in real time. And the graphic user interface is what makes Mida Civil easy to use. And here is the interface of the Mida Civil. As you can see, it's very similar to the programs like Microsoft Word or AutoCAD. And uh, each features are equipped with the uh, icons representing the purpose of the uh, feature. And if you see on the top, uh, the each ribbon menus are arranged in an order uh, of the work process. So you can just follow them from left to right and then finish your task. On the side, uh, you can turn on tree menu, uh, which you can easily access the inputs you made to the model or the results uh, from the analysis. In the middle, the model is reflects reflect uh, any inputs or a change made in real time. Also, the message window on the bottom uh, tells you uh, what's wrong with the model. So you can just go uh, to the element or node and make the change necessary. Going back to ribbon menu, uh, it is arranged in the order of the process. So uh, from modeling to from the left, and you can set the load and uh, input the uh, parameter for the analysis and. After the analysis, you can uh, see the results and then make the design 
and the evaluations and all other necessary tools. And this is an example of the tree menu. Uh, you can see your material data, uh, section data, and the necessary things for the uh, dynamic reports. And the message window uh, telling you uh, what, what the error is about. One thing good about Midas is that uh, you can make the easy modification, whether it is from the wizard modeling or manually done. So in Mitercible, you can drag and drop your section data uh, to the model view uh, to change the sections or any properties. So in this case, uh, you selected the gutter and then change the gutter section to outer box beam. And likewise, uh, you can uh, select the beam and then change the section by dragging and dropping. And then these are done uh, with the tree menu on each side where you can see all the inputs and the results uh, you made uh, with the model. Now that we saw the interface and the easy modification uh, by drag and dropping uh, the section and the material uh, to the model view, uh, we actually wanted to uh, move into the program and I want to show you uh, some of the features uh, that is useful in post-wizard uh, modification. Uh, this is two-span uh, precast gutter bridge uh, created by the uh, pre-stress composite bridge wizard. And it is the, along with the steel composite bridge, it is the uh, part of the composite gutter module, uh, which is actually most used, used uh, module among our clients. What's good about Mitercible's uh, wizard is that actually uh, you can save the wizard file and don't have to write it over uh, for the inputs that you have made to create the uh, model. And then uh, after you save it, uh, you can bring it bring it up anytime. Uh, to make any modification or you can recreate the uh, wizard model and based on the uh, change you have made. So here uh, we load up the uh, previously uh, created uh, wizard. So just in case uh, you change the span information or deck width, uh, you can always come back and open up your wizard file and just change, uh, make the change necessary and then just regenerate it again. And for the uh, PSC uh, composite gutter module, uh, you can create the precast gutter type or the splice gutter type. And for the modeling type, you can either uh, model it as an all frame or deck as plate or gutter as frame. And then uh, you can uh, designate the uh, support skew angles and uh, based on the uh, you know picture shown and the radius and for the uh, splice color type you can also uh, use the multi curve function uh, to uh, reflect the multi curve or maybe straight to partial curved uh, structures and Every section has the uh, picture guide uh, to help the users to easily input and understand uh, what to input on the wizard file. And this is a section for the substructure. Uh, you can define the uh, st stiffness and the actually it works like a wizard for the peer and the peer cap. Uh, you can define the peer section and the uh, uh, peer cap section and then it will automatically uh, generate the substructure portion of your uh, structure uh, along with the uh, superstructures. 
and there's another guide for the substructure uh, so you can uh, define the length and height and the spacing uh, using this diagram and if you move into section uh, you can define the uh, how many gutters are there and using the reference line and you just input the uh, offsets from the reference line and then for the materials uh, we have the uh, CSA database for both concrete and steel So for the concrete, uh, we have the CSA code in the database. And then also for the steel, uh, we have the steel database for uh, CSA. And you can always input uh, you know, user-defined section uh, or the material uh, properties uh, on your model. And then uh, you can define the gutter information. And for the tendon, uh, you can using you can use this guide uh, to uh, input the uh, number of the uh, strand on there and the transverse distance and the height of the uh, tendon location. And it will immediately in real time are uh, reflected in the uh, you know, these pictures and you can zoom in and zoom out to see and you put in jacking stress and assign the tendon to the uh, span and the, for the load uh, you can define the uh, dimension of the uh, barriers and median strip as well and then uh, you can define the uh, weight for the uh, before composite and the after composite uh, conditions and you can also uh, define moving load co case uh, per the Canada code. And in our vehicle database, uh, we have multiple uh, CSA code standard load, such as CR625 or uh, multiple uh, Ontario uh, load and then a British Columbia load. Uh, you can always, uh, you know, add your uh, user-defined uh, vehicle as well. And then you can also uh, uh, define the construction stage. And there's also a guide for the uh, construction stage. And then you can define it and then it'll automatically generate your model uh, for the construction stage. You can also uh, define the reinforcement for the uh, composite sections. So this is created uh, by the wizard. And I actually wanted to show you uh, that uh, we, you can just use the wizard file uh, to modify your model or uh, you can use this merge data file option uh, to bring in other model and merge it together. So for this instance, I want to uh, just go to the model that I already created. Uh, it's a curved section. And you define the uh, origin points of where you want to merge it into. And it will, uh, you know, uh, you know, copy uh, that data uh, to the origin points of the current model. And then I just wanted to uh, flip this model to make it proper. And then if you hit apply, it'll merge the uh, section together. Mm, I, and then I just wanted to change the color. Just give me a second. You can just uh, change the color uh, for the uh, material. 
to make it more uh, realistic. Okay. Okay, and our model is created. Also, for the post uh, wizard modification, uh, you can use the feature like scale the node uh, to flare up the deck or uh, use other uh, features uh, for the node and element uh, to make the modification. So here, for example, uh, if you want to uh, copy the uh, substructure, you just select the substructure and then use the translate function features uh, and then uh, put in your distance okay. uh, to copy the uh, substructure into uh, middle of the span so here uh, you created the partially curved uh, structures so good thing about Midas is that you can easily you know modify uh, the model you created using the wizard uh, now that we uh, talked about the uh, post wizard modification uh, I would like to talk about our new, newly developed uh, PSC design for per the uh, CSA S614 code. The design code uh, works in this uh, tab above uh, use called the PSC section as you can see and it it works in conjunction with uh, the structure wizard uh, for the pre-stress composite bridge. So using the wizard, uh, I already uh, created the model and ran the analysis. And you, when I created the wizard, uh, I, as I said before, uh, I could define the moving load uh, per the Canadian code and define the vehicle for uh, CR625. And then I ran the analysis. Actually, actually before running the analysis, uh, you have to assign the properties uh, for the creep and shrinkage and compression strengths. For the creep and shrinkage, uh, you can just go into the uh, this section and then uh, modify your uh, time-dependent material uh, using the code and the uh, strengths of the concrete, compressive strengths of the concrete. And if you apply, if you apply, uh, it will take the time-dependent material uh, creep and shrinkage property into that account. The same thing for the other one and compressive strengths as well uh, if you uh, enter your code and the uh, compressive strengths of concrete at the age of 28 days uh, it'll automatically uh, draw the graph of the compressive strengths uh, by the day on there And then you can use this uh, change property tab uh, to assign the element dependent material. And you can just select the code and apply. And you always have to uh, link the material uh, using this function uh, 
using the uh, crepe branch shrinkage and compressive strength uh, properties and then I'll link the material together uh, for the corresponding ones and then if you go to section manager uh, there's a section uh, to assign the reinforcement so it is very easy to uh, assign the reinforcement uh, you just set the guideline first and then it will show the guideline and either if you wanna uh, use the coordinate y and, y and z axis you can do that as well or you choose the input method b and then you can just uh, select the starting point uh, to the end point and then uh, put in the number you want, number of rebar you want to put in and if you click the edge bar uh, it will consider the uh, reinforce bar, reinforcement bar at the end as well and I have already uh, assigned the reinforcement for the longitudinal and the shear reinforcement And then if you go to load uh, and the moving load, uh, you have to define the uh, moving load cases. Here uh, you can use the uh, load case for permit vehicle or the moving load optimization feature. And here uh, I put in the two uh, load uh, for CL625. And then, uh, if you go to Result tab and use the Load Combination and the Concrete, and you can use the Auto Generation feature uh, to generate the uh, Load Combination and the Envelope uh, for the per the uh, CSA S614 code. And then you can choose the Load Factors as well. And if you click that, it will uh, give you ultimate limit state combination and serviceability uh, limit state uh, combination and possibly the uh, fatigue limit state uh, combination as well. If you run the analysis, uh, you can see the result in uh, uh, if you want to see the deformation, uh, you can choose the deformation and just turn on the legend and use the uh, MVMAX moving load cases and it will uh, display the uh, displacement uh, for the uh, precast gutter beam. You can also uh, see the beam diagram and you can choose uh, which field you want to use. You want to use the deform function and then it will uh, generate the beam diagram for you. You can also uh, check the negative moment using the MB mean uh, moving load case. In this case, uh, I think it have considered the side uh, gutter as well uh, only. Uh, after your analysis is ran, uh, you can go to the PSC tab and start uh, using the design feature. And for the parameter, uh, you can select the design code first. Uh, for us, uh, we want to design uh, using the uh, CSA S614 code. Then you need to define the uh, tendon type uh, such as low relaxation uh, strand, smooth high strength bar, a uh, deformed high strength bar, and whether you want to uh, calculate the flexure strength uh, by the code, and what kind of reinforcing rebars are there. Uh, whether construction type is segmental, in this case non-segmental, 
and uh, whether environment exposure have the uh, de-icing chemical sprayed or no de-icing chemical sp sprayed and these are some of the output parameters uh, for the stresses for a uh, closed section uh, and the uh, stress in pre-stressing tendons uh, principal stresses uh, and the uh, ultimate limit state for flexure resistance, uh, shear resistance, and torsion resistance. And then uh, you go to PSC design material and you can define the uh, materials you are designing with. In this case, uh, CSA code uh, for the concrete uh, material and rebar information and for the slab uh, same and then uh, design and output positions are where uh, where you put in uh, the element uh, that you want to design and the output position is uh, uh, the elements that you want to produce into the Excel And in case of you are uh, dealing with the segmental bridge, uh, you have the feature for the uh, segmental bridge on here. Uh, you can also uh, define the uh, surface classification, such as intentionally roughened, uh, not intentionally roughened, uh, mon monolithically. And you can check your assignment on uh, this dot 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 button on there as a table form. In this case, we don't have any you know, in interface uh, share uh, entered in. After that, you can uh, click perform design. And then the design will run. And after the design is ran, uh, you can go to output position and see uh, output uh, that you want to uh, produce in an Excel report. In this case, uh, in this case, uh, I chose the element from uh, 330 to 354. And then uh, if you click the uh, produce Excel button, uh, you, the automatically uh, the Excel report will be uh, generated uh, per the CSA S614 code uh, with all the uh, you know input information such as section properties and materials, and for each uh, for each uh, element. Uh, it gives you a detailed report whether it is uh, passing uh, using the uh, CSA S614 code, and it also tells you, uh, you know, uh, the equations and the uh, graphics and the you know uh, which part and to refer on the code. So you can use this uh, information uh, to check uh, your design and you know uh, if uh, you need to make the modifications and you can see uh, what's failing and uh, you can make the adjustment as necessary. So that was the end of the uh, PSC design uh, per the CSA S614 code. And it's very intuitive. Uh, you just set the parameters and the design materials and you uh, s designate the uh, position where you want to uh, design the uh, gutter. 
and then uh, for the Excel report uh, you just have to designate the output positions and now uh, I'd like to move on to the uh, still composite gutter sections and uh, show you uh, design features uh, per CSA S614 code okay uh, I created a model already uh, it's a curved uh, still composite uh, plate gutter bridge and it's very similar to the design example uh, number three uh, on the uh, CISC uh, steel bridge design uh, example course design examples it's two span a curved bridge uh, with the vertical elevations After running the analysis, uh, first thing I want to do is to uh, create the load combinations. So uh, for the composite steel gutter design, uh, go to the composite steel gutter design tab and auto generate. Uh, use the auto generation and the select code uh, CSA S614. And then you can add or replace. Uh, load, load combination and it will automatically uh, generate the load combination uh, per the CSA code and if you need to uh, manually add the uh, load combination uh, you can do that as well you can add as an envelope uh, too and then you can uh, select the load case and enter in the factor and it will define the uh, load combination for you as you can see uh, load combination is already generated in order to use the uh, steel composite design uh, go to the design tab and Go to the composite design tab and if you open it up uh, there's a there's a parameter setting uh, from top to bottom and you can just follow the uh, order and uh, define the uh, parameters and let's go uh, over one by one uh, first uh, design parameters uh, you can select code uh, as a CSA S614 and then press update by code and it will automatically update the uh, strength resistance factor uh, per the code and then if you are using uh, uh, this feature for the uh, multiple box section or the single box section uh, you need to designate that as well and if you are uh, using uh, this for the curved gutter. Uh, there's option for uh, check for horizontal curved gutter and option for construction stages as well. And design parameter uh, you can choose and select uh, ultimate limit state flexure, uh, ULS shear, and service limit state, uh, and uh, stiffener check, and the fatigue limit state. Uh, I just selected all of them. And for the design material, as we did the same in the uh, PSC design, uh, you can uh, designate the uh, grade of the uh, steel materials and also uh, concrete and the reinforcement uh, materials uh, properties. If you go to hybrid factor, uh, you can uh, designate uh, different a uh, grade of the uh, steel uh, for a uh, top and bottom and the web section of the uh, gutter
and then here load combination type uh, you can uh, designate uh, whether uh, the load combination is uh, ultimate limit state a service limit state or fat fatigue limit state and uh, for the longitudinal uh, reinforcement uh, you can define easily uh, using the guideline and then a uh, method to put input uh, data right here and for uh, this example uh, we uh, provided uh, for the pro provided uh, reinforcement for the uh, negative flexure section only and next uh, transfer stiffener and transfer stiffeners are required for the uh, considering the tension field action in interior stiffened panels for uh, strength limit state check and you can uh, define the uh, transverse stiff mm -hmm. stiffener, uh, whether it's a flat or T shape. And then for the J node as well. And then next, uh, I want to define the embrace length. And the embrace length is used for a lateral torsional. A buckling check in composite design and here and you can always check uh, your inputs uh, using the table form And then uh, assign the design position. And I uh, selected uh, from 360 uh, to 400. And then you can also uh, define the fatigue uh, parameters uh, to you know, assess the uh, fatigue on the a gutter and then uh, you can also uh, use this curve bridge info uh, to consider uh, allow the software to consider the uh, bridge as a curve bridge for composite design and uh, radius inputted here it uh, does not affect the uh, design forces uh, due to curvature uh, and design forces are solely uh, calculated from the analysis result. And if you go to design tables, uh, you can check the uh, design force and moment. And then after you set up all the parameters, uh, you can click this uh, perform design button. And after the uh, design is ran, uh, it will say, as you will say, uh, composite steel gutter design has been completed. And then uh, you will be able to see, uh, you know, in table form, or uh, you can just produce the Excel reports. Now I went over uh, two new design development for the CSA S614 code. Uh, one was a uh, steel composite section design check uh, per the CSA S614. And another was a PSC uh, design uh, per the CSA S614. Uh, for steel composite section design check, uh, you will uh, just have to uh, designate the uh, parameters 
and it will consider the before composite and after composite and the time dependent material. Also, uh, you will be able to uh, produce it in an Excel report uh, with the automatic uh, report function. And uh, you will be able to uh, obtain a uh, report along with the uh, design code and the uh, equations. And here, uh, flexure design check, and shear design check, and service limit states check are one of them. And there are more uh, check available uh, in the Excel report. And PSC uh, design uh, as per CSS 614, uh, it can consider the uh, segmental bridges. And the uh, you'll be able to see in the design report a flexure design and the shear design and the torsional design and more. And moreover, uh, there's a reinforced concrete design uh, per the CSA code. Uh, you will be able to use this code uh, for the uh, pier cap and the column design pier, and even for the drill shaft design. And you can also use the general section designer, uh, design designer, uh, per the CSS CSA S6 uh, code, and you'll be able to. Uh, uh, produce a moment curvature curve and the uh, PM curve. As some of you might already know, uh, Mida Civil is a very powerful program. And the analysis you might need for the uh, bridge engineering projects, Midas can cover it all. Here are some lists of the analysis that uh, Mida Civil can handle. Uh, construction stage analysis and moving load analysis, a P delta analysis, and thermal stress analysis, and the uh, nonlinear analysis and the uh, seismic analysis. All these analysis can be handled in uh, Mida Sybil. This is an example of the uh, steel structures construction stage analysis. And stage one is uh, substructures, and the uh, stage two is a uh, concrete pour, and stage three is the uh, wearing wearing surface and a barrier. And if you use a wizard, uh, you can easily uh, generate the construction stage uh, using wizard. And you can also uh, account for the tendon pre-stress loss, uh, such as relaxation loss and the creep and shrinkage loss. And you can obtain the uh, tendon stress limit check as well. Uh, for the moving load analysis, uh, you can use moving load tracer uh, to uh, find out the exact location of the vehicle uh, when there is a critical moment. And for the live analysis, uh, you can do uh, normal and concurrent force uh, analysis for the moving load. And another thing is there are a lot of uh, uh, high, speed, high speed rails and uh, light rail projects are going on uh, in North America. And many companies uh, and the government uh, use MIDAS for the uh, rail bridge, bridge and the light rail structures like uh, Minnesota light rails and the uh, Caltrans uh, high speed uh, projects are being done by the uh, Midas Sybil and we have the uh, analysis wizard just for the rail track uh, analysis uh, it provides the automated modeling for uh, structure and rail interaction uh, such as simplified uh, separate analysis auto generation uh, stage analysis or complete analysis model and moving train load and auto generation. Uh, if you are working on the uh, rail track interaction, uh, it will be very good idea uh, to try this out uh, and evaluate it. And nowadays, uh, performance-based uh, seismic designs are uh, uh, 
increasing. Uh, like uh, British Columbia are moving toward the performance-based seismic design. Uh, we provide the uh, pushover analysis and we have the tutorials and set process uh, so you can easily uh, perform the analysis for uh, si performance-based seismic design. Uh, other seismic analysis capability uh, includes uh, response spectrum analysis and boundary uh, nonlinear time history analysis and inelastic uh, time history analysis. Here's an example of the uh, nonlinear analysis, uh, pushover analysis. And more nonlinear matrix. Actually, uh, soil structure interaction is uh, one of the uh, big strengths in Midas. Uh, you can automatically uh, generate the uh, nonlinear point spring support uh, for the abutments and the retaining walls, and also uh, for the piles, piles and the uh, you know uh, column. Uh, you can generate the uh, general link for uh, soil structure interaction. Here is an example of the uh, nonlinear soil springs for pile. And nowadays, uh, importance of uh, analyzing and designing uh, substructures and the superstructure together are increasing. And Midas Civil is uh, suitable for the uh, analyzing both superstructures and substructures together. shows the uh, example of the automatic soil spring generated for the uh, soil structure interaction. As you can see, uh, octagon on the uh, abutment and the piles are automatically generated uh, if you put in the uh, general soil parameters and the uh, dimension of the uh, abutment. Also, uh, we provide the dynamic report generator. Uh, so once you are set with the uh, format for your uh, report, uh, you can generate a report uh, within Midas Sybil and open up the uh, Microsoft Word and just bring in your own format and you can put any image or tables or any inputs in Midas Sybil into the Word, uh, Word uh, Microsoft Word. And then uh, if you modify a model, uh, you can regenerate the uh, report uh, without uh, doing anything, uh, it will automatically uh, change out the values and the results for you. I wanted to show you this model uh, because it is a good example of all-in-one modeling. Uh, this model consists of the uh, superstructures and substructure and even uh, piles and drill shaft. As I mentioned in the beginning, uh, all-in-one analysis are becoming essential and it provides more accurate results and consistency. And Midas Civil offers many features for bridge engineers in Canada. It is easy to use and give you more freedom than you will see in any other program. Also, it is optim optimized for the engineers in Canada for all-in-one process from modeling to design. We continue to make a development because we care about our client. Uh, if there is any feedback uh, while using the program, uh, please let us know uh, because we take it seriously. Uh, we are not the one who just uh, develop a program and abandon it and stop developing and supporting our users. We have passion to provide uh, best solution for our engineers. And next year, next year uh, we are going to uh, take another step forward. A BIM process is becoming more popular and important in the industry. And we are planning to do the same uh, for bridge engineering uh, by integrating Midas Civil uh, with other industry. Uh, I'll end the webinar uh, with a one short video uh, for our new development called CIM. Uh, targeting 2017 and thank you for joining today